I'm going to start configuring the flight controller on the Mini Talon. But I thought I would do something else first, and I imagine this has been done hundreds of thousands of times over the past 10 years or so that Ardu Pilot has been in existence. existence. I'm going to try to give you just kind of a quick overview of Ardu. Uh, hope I do a good job of this because everybody seems to be so daunted by Ardu now and I think that's because it's grown into such a big monster luckily I was in in its infancy days and uh, got to work with it when there was only a hundred perimeters <laughs> so just straight up the main site for the Ardu pilot project, I'll type it in up here, is Ardu pilot dot org. This is the main page for everything. Uh, I'm going to state this right now, real quick. Uh, some people pronounce Ardu. Ardu. Some people pronounce it in other ways. I don't know which is exactly absolutely right. I don't have any problems with what uh, others call it. Uh, I may make a lot of uh, mispronunciations in a lot of things I do in life. I'm not going to hold others feet to the fire to be perfect because I'm not. With that said, this is where it all starts. This is the home page. Uh, the th most useful thing to you is probably going to be the docs right here. So I'm going to click there first. Okay, Ardu Pilot. Main name to cover the whole project but for each platform that they concentrate on in Ardu Pilot, they add that platform name to the end of Ardu. And I call it Ardu because I think it comes from Arduino in the original. But that's just, again, my opinion. So over here, you're going to see Copter, Plane, Rover, sub antenna tracker same things you see right here copter plane rover sub antenna tracker so these individual areas of our do pilot are referred to by many and myself as our do copter our do plane our do rover our do sub and our do a ten antenna tracker. I hope that clears up some of the confusion a lot it seem to <laughs> uh, have of what this is called. I'm not going to go through all the tabs on this because this would be hundreds of hours if I went through everything on this. Uh, some of these user cases I'll dig down in here later when I'm talking about the mini talent this is where I got my specifications for uh, some uh, parts that I put on the mini talent one of the best ways everybody's one of the main things that people ask is how do I configure Ardu copter? How do I figure configure Ardu plane? How do I configure my rover? Well, this is set up basically to come in here and click on which platform you want to build. And then you just go down this list. This is going to take you a long time. I can't change that. Uh, 
And then after you've been through it a, a time or two, you're going to just go to the places that you want. You're going to start searching for what you want in this window. I want to know something about Mavlink. I type it in the window, and oh, great. Uh, you'll find data about that. Let's try something that might come up. Detail. Oh, man. <laughs> hmm, maybe that's because I'm in copter. <laughs> There's not a VTEL copter. Oh, man. Rudder. <laughs> uh, oh, well. <laughs> I'm being thwarted at every turn. I'm still really fatigued from that flail Friday to finish the mini talent uh, and I don't have a script I don't do scripts I will start doing scripts uh, later <laughs> the search will work honest <laughs> but what you do is you just start working through these tabs key features getting started a lot of it up front is just a lot of reading to find out lots of stuff. Then they here they start talking about what hardware you might use. First time setup. There's subcategories to these. Here's where you actually start getting your hands on things. You install your ground station software. Mission planner. Installing ground station. Oops. Mission Planner is not the only ground station. There are other ground stations. Uh, I'm not going to go into every one of these tabs. There's thousands of them. Uh, Mission Planner. APM Planner. I don't know if that's still out there. Mav Proxy. Q Ground Control. UGCS, Universal Ground Control Station, Tower, Mav Pilot 1.4, Side Pilot, Andro Pilot. I tried to load this one recently. I, it, I couldn't find it on the PlayStation for my Android, but I did find it as a link on a web page as a separate install that kind of scared me, so I didn't do it. Here's additional information for what you'll need with some uh, Android items. Uh, I've tried a lot of these. I tried this one. Uh, basically, most people use Mission Planner. Uh, and the secondary one most people use is Q Ground Control. I like Mission Planner. I've always used it. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Here's um, gives you a little information. This assumes you're just green. You've never done RC. How to mount your autopilots, wirings, talking about ESCs, motors, installing GPSs and compasses, talking about magnetic interference, vibration dampening. If you're going to get into Ardu, I, I honestly would choose this. I would. I did. In my early days, I read everything on these pages. Nine years ago, I read this day after day after day after day after day. Uh, over and over and over. Uh, that's how I learned things. Uh, talks about loading the firmware onto your boards. How do you do that? Connecting Mission Planner to Ardu Pilot. Uh, this is talks about what I'm telling you here. Is you can use telemetry radios like this, 57600. You can use uh, USB cables. Uh, this just basically goes through everything step by step. So this talks about first flights, sub 
topic un under there. This will start telling you about your flight modes. This is your pre-armed safety checks, how to arm and disarm your platform, tuning, measuring vibration, which is very important. Uh, hover throttle for a vertical is extremely important. You really want that 50% throttle to be hover because you want to develop in your brain in a panic situation if throttle is part of what you want to get to a position quickly uh, you want to kind of go for that 50% position physically on that uh, gimbal rather than thinking about anything else uh, matter of fact one of my original problems with flying verticals was while I was in some kind of flight controller mode I didn't pay any attention to what I was doing with my throttle and I would bump it and stuff and either raise it or lower it and then if uh, I got into a little situation and it caused a little bit of panic and I wanted to come back out of a flight controller mode as soon as I did if the throttle had been bumped to a higher level the damn thing took off straight up sadly if you go back and look through my, a lot of my videos a lot of my first crashes were simply caused by the fact that I had bumped my throttle down and I was flying 10, 20 feet off the ground and I wanted to come out of a flight controller mode and when I did because of low throttle uh, it just hit the ground boom it was on the ground I was going what the hey and that was because uh, bad poor throttle control uh, in my physical flying uh, I pretty quickly learned and used right here setting the hover throttle to get me a 50% throttle always be aware and try to keep when I was in a flight mode still try to keep that throttle stick at 50% uh, if I find it feel by feel or sight outside of that uh, I'll put it back to 50% even while I'm flying around in auto mode because if I have to go out of it I really want it to be just go into a hover right there. Uh, that was one of the biggest things that started helping me with the quads I was flying in the first days was really this setting the hover throttle and being aware to keep my throttle in that 50% per position. So then my mind started, if I was in a, a, a loiter mode or something and was going to come out into a manual mode, on a panic, my brain also on that panic was thinking, at the time I started thinking about I have to flip this switch to move it in to a manual mode because I'm in trouble right now and my brain was also thinking and I also have to assure I'm at 50% throttle so look you're gonna find little stuff like this through these notes it's just they're gold gold is buried uh, in this web page if a problem arises, flight features, advanced configurations, boy, all the stuff that comes into this when you start reading through all this. And yes, look at all those tabs. And what is underneath them? CAN bus setup. And here's all the stuff underneath CAN bus setup. Yes. If you're new, if you're green, I'm sorry, you've got a lot to read. And to absorb it, you're probably going to have to read it more than one time. I do. That's the way I learn things. I read it. I read it again. And again. And again. And again. And our do is there's just years and years of uh, t 
text here. Some of it a little outdated, some of it not, some of it's even wrong. Because it all was left there. Some of the things that are wrong is in the early firmware versions, there was a way we set up VTELs that as the firmware versions came up and up and up and then it way up in years, two, five, six years in, they completely changed their software and started doing channel mapping differently and therefore the setup of a VTEL changed completely in that version. But the old text telling you how to set it up incorrectly is still there. It's not incorrect if you're using the version that was spoke about at that time, but it is incorrect if you're using the current version. Little things like that are in there. But there is just so much in here that you're going to have to have. It's not, it's nice. If you don't use BL Heli ESCs, then it's just extra data to read this and learn how you might use those. Uh, if you're using a CAN bus, this is going to be very important to you. So what I'm trying to do here, and I might not be doing a good job of it, is trying to just how important is this web page? Mission planning. How do you do mission planning with mission planner? Log files. How do you analyze log files? Let's tell you everything. So I'm going to kind of stop <laughs> this right here because I think it's getting kind of long with our do pilot projects the most important thing is to just read this go into these docs right here on the our do pilot page choose which one of these probably going to start in one of these first four choose one of these four that you want to begin with and then read everything on it and then just start doing it I don't know I can help you with this I try to help you with this but this is the best help I and advice I can give you read 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 the Ardu pilot page Myself, I was wanting to compete in the Spark Fun Autonomous Vehicle Competition in Boulder, Colorado. And uh, maybe that's why I chose Ardu Pilot because there was all these platforms are right here ready to go. I'm not sure about what I never had at that time. Anyway, I started out with a rover because my impression, opinion was use that base exactly uh, threw it away uh, and I used a rock crawler base I had one of these it didn't last long no problem with that one uh, the gears and beach sand don't go together <laughs> uh, yeah Here's your Spark Fun Autonomous Vehicle Competition. That was great times back then. Anyway, um, I used a rock crawler that goes all of uh, three miles an hour because I figured if it was running a mission, my old butt could catch it and stop it before it ran out in the road or did something it shouldn't. <laughs> and then after I got my rover, doing what I wanted to do then I would build me up a quadcopter and when I had made the rover run the four corners of a football field I would put that same mission in my quadcopter and when my quadcopter could run the four corners of a football field I was basically through with my quadcopter and then I would build me a plane and put that 
mission in an airplane and when my airplane could run the four corners of a football field I thought I probably by that time would be ready for an autom autonomous vehicle competition and that was the my plan for working up to that and I had done uh, control line airplanes and other airplanes since 19 oh my goodness probably 62 <laughs> I didn't have the money as a child to do RC airplanes so I, I hadn't done RC airplanes as a child but and probably when I was in the Navy seems like I got some pre-made I, I did the route that a lot of people did between 18 and when I started this drone deal is I uh, bought a lot of those pre-made RC airplanes and excitedly put them together and didn't read the instructions threw them in the air and they ran off someplace I haven't seen them since <laughs> most of them immediately stalled and plummeted to the ground and were broken I think all in all the uh, 30 years or so I did that because I just didn't want to put the money that was required into RC airplanes um, I did use RC uh, transmitters and receivers to remotely control devices like launching model rockets so I could stand way back and not have a, a, a uh, wire going between them so I was using the RC hardware I just wasn't using it in an airplane or anything and copters until the KK2 board came along with uh, flight stabilization accelerometers and gyros uh, <laughs> for me those things were unflyable I still can't do acro mode yet after nine years and I've played with it on simulators and stuff with uh, verticals it's just not my thing so my thought was now drones I could probably do RC airplanes and stuff because of the new flight controllers I'm seeing in KK2 boards and stuff so that got me full blown into spending the money to fully get into RC so my like I say I was going to build up a rover a quad and an airplane and enter the autonomous vehicle competition uh, been working on that for nine years now I took a three-year hiatus when we had to move I don't know what else to say I, I, I'll start with my build of the mini talon going exactly into mission planner but this is an overdue of our due pilot our due copter our due sub our due rover our due tracker our due plane under the our due pilot open source program uh, and for those that are daunted by this right here ardupilot.org is your Bible uh, I don't know of any way around reading 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 this well yeah you can do like lots of people do and I do myself buy something at the store open the box try to put it together without reading the instructions and learning the hard way you're going to save yourself a lot of grief if you just read, 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 read ardupilot.org. Based spe specifically, what was that picture? Well, let me see if I can go back to that one. Gee, brother, <laughs> that's a hell of a helmet you got there. I do use a safety hat sometime, but <laughs> anyway. 
uh, come over into the docks do read the go, choose which platform you want to do you don't have to do me do like I did rover copter and then plane slow a little faster uh, can put it into uh, hover mode uh, when I'm trying to chase it down. If it does something funky and starts to run off, at least if I can get it into hover mode or uh, position hold mode the rest of my run, I don't have to keep running after it. <laughs> In the case of an airplane doing up to 100 miles an hour, I'm not, I'm not going to catch it, first of all. They're up in the air choose your approach path on your own there okay that's an overview of ourdupilot.org and my opinion of logical approaches to learning ourdupilot I love ourdupilot but I want to learn INAV and I just want to learn all of it. I've always loved electronics, and when the drones came out, the K, I saw a KT, K2 board where they had accelerators and gyros, and I didn't have to try to figure out how to keep that darn helicopter flying. I was hooked again. I've always been into RC airplanes. When I was a child, even though I didn't have my own, I was at the RC fields a lot. I was at airports a lot past the age of 18. Uh, started getting my pilot's license for real airplanes at the age of 19. So from the age of 19 on, I was pretty much, I'm at airports a lot still to this day. All right, thank you. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to hit each one of them individually.